welcome to Off The Ranch. My name is Matt and we have a very cool video for you today. Let me just start off by showing you guys this. You've seen it before, most likely, but if you haven't, this is a 1,000 ounce block of silver. It's actually a little more. I think it's 1,027 ounces. And I got this a few years ago. I filmed a demolition ranch video where we shot silver and gold, and I got to keep the silver. As you can tell, it's got some, some holes in it from demolition ranch. So it is pure silver, plus a little bit of lead and copper, most likely, but it's giant. And it was awesome because I got to keep it. And at the time, it was worth about $15,000. The price of silver was about 15 bucks an ounce. And this is a thousand. So it was worth about $15,000, which was super cool. And then the price of silver rose and rose and rose, got really high and was about $27 an ounce, which means this thing was worth $27,000. And I was like, man, it just sits in the bottom of my safe with a lot of pew pews piled all over it, not bringing joy to anyone. But I mean, it's a good way to like preserve your value, you know, like it's a good way to hold value. It's solid metal. It's not ever gonna be worth less, most likely. I mean, everybody's always gonna want silver. And so I was cool with keeping it. And then finally I was like, no, it's $27,000. Like I wanna do something fun with that. And so I put a video up and an Instagram post up and I said, if anyone has anything worth $27,000 that's cool, I want to trade you my block of silver. And I got a bazillion emails. A bunch of people wanted to trade F-250s and F-350s and like, you know, 20 year old trucks. They were cool, but I was just like, that's not that fun. But then someone came to me with a trade that I could not pass up, which you guys already know based on the title and thumbnail. Uh, this thing now, I just looked at the spot price, it's worth uh, like $29,000 now. But the trade that you're about to see is definitely worth more. I'm coming out well on this deal. <laughs> it's pretty sweet prepare yourselves. You may want to sit down. You may want to go ahead and uh, go to the bathroom now because you're going to yourself. It's, um, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of people that work here. It could be anyone's. It could be a, someone buying merch in the store. I, they don't hurt, okay? I don't know. I, I'm just as mad about this as you are. I, bye. This is a 2010 Chevrolet Suburban and it's completely stock. To totally stock. Those wheels, the super, Really beefy rims with all those bolts. That's just a Chevrolet option, you know, just totally stock. It's fine. Everything's stock. Okay. Let's uh let's just open the door. You'll notice there's a noise. That's a stock noise. All Chevrolet doors have hydraulic assist to open them. I was doing an extra slow too. But... These doors are a little heavy. And so they have hydraulics built in to open them. Little button here to close it. <laughs> but you can hear those hydraulics working. And you may notice, uh, yeah, that's glass. That is all a giant piece of like four inch thick bulletproof glass. So crazy. And then you'll also notice around here, there is a half inch thick of steel, solid steel, super thick all around where the glass is not. So this seals up nice and tight right there. So there is no way for anything to get in. But if you get in here, once you get past that, it's a pretty stock Suburban on the inside. The seats are all stock and 
I've got three rows so I can fit nine people because this thing folds up as well. Let's just close the door. We got the same thing on the mm -hmm. inside. Whoa, whoa, almost opened that thing right in that guy's car. Mm -hmm. Buttons on the inside for the hydraulics as well. So now we are completely safe <laughs> from literally anything. Literally anything. And you can see we've got, it's got like this mesh on the windows. It, they're tinted pretty dark as well, but then they have this mesh on them which makes it pretty impossible, like completely impossible to see in the car. Same thing on the front windshield here. You can see that mesh there. The front windshield, of course, is armored as well. So completely armored front windshield, all of the side windows, and there's a back wall back there, completely armored. All the doors, as you can see, have had some work. All the car, every piece of it is armored. Nothing can get through this, nothing. Back doors have the same hydraulic opening system on them. Back doors also have the same giant pieces of steel here in case anything comes through here because as you can see that is bulletproof this part's not that's the original door there if anything came through there it's gonna hit here or anywhere in there this is all armored here let's go on the other side so we can get back there so climbing in the doors are slightly smaller but not really noticeable and then once you get in the interior is pretty much all the exact same size. You can see we still have windows in the back, but they look very armored. <laughs> that glass, all bulletproof. And then you can see a lot of this stuff is all aftermarket. I mean, that's just solid half inch steel as well around that wheel well there under all of this carpet. It is all solid steel as well. The ceiling also looks different. These lights are obviously not Chevrolet factory. The ceiling is armored as well. The floor is armored as well. This one part where there's no carpet, you can see super thick steel there. The back right here behind the third row, totally armored as well. And there is another piece of super thick bulletproof glass right there so you can still see behind. So when you open up the back here you will see that that is where the bulletproofing ends. This part back here is all stock Chevrolet so anything you keep back here not gonna be protected but you don't really need to protect your cargo back here necessarily from anything. All the people are what's important and all the people are very protected like super duper crazily protected. Okay, we're gonna do something we don't usually do on this channel. We're gonna talk a little bit about pew pews because that's the reason you would have an armored vehicle. So there's different levels of rating uh, and in cars they use what's called, well they use this thing called B, B, B4, B5 to talk about how high the armor is rated. In body armor you talk about the NIJ system in the US at least where we say it's NIJ level three and then we know what it stops or level four and we know what it stops. So I didn't know anything about car armor until this. So let me tell you a little about this. This one is B7. So this is a B7 Suburban. B7 is crazy. Like that is really good. Let me, let me read you what the B levels do. So a B1 will stop a 22 long rifle. So cars are already almost B1 by themselves. You know, the glass is not, which so you need to upgrade the glass. The doors maybe, depending on the car. Some will stop at 22, some of them will let it right through. So cars are already close to being B1. So like you might have a car that's B1, except for the glass. Front glass is probably B1. So that it doesn't take much to make a car B1. B2 stops a nine millimeter. That's impressive. That takes a lot to stop a nine millimeter. So that, and that's everything. That's not like, you know, if you shoot a nine millimeter at a car door, it might stop if it hits the motor to your power windows. But if it doesn't, it'll go through. It's only called B2 if it can stop anywhere on the car. Like every single spot has to be able to stop a nine millimeter for a B2. A B3, 357 Magnum. A B4, 44 Magnum. A B5, is a 223. A B6 is a 308. So we're getting into big rifle rounds now. So a B6 will stop a 308. 
and then you get to a B7, which will stop, I'm finding conflicting data, uh, it for sure will stop a 30-06 AP round, but I, I saw something else that says a B6 will stop that as well. Um, I also have seen some people say that B7s will stop a 50 BMG, which is crazy. I've shot bulletproof glass that is this thick, I've shot steel that is this thick, and it does stop a 50 BMG. Um, so I don't know, I'm finding conflicting data on what a B7 actually will stop, but it for sure will stop a 30-06 black tip, an armor piercing 30-06, which is crazy. And the worst you're probably gonna ever encounter is someone with regular rifle rounds. Not shooting black tips, not shooting 30-06, like they're shooting ARs or AKs, or probably pistols at you. You're good in this B7 Suburban, like for sure. 50 BMG could be dicey, but also could be fine. I'm, I'm not sure, it might be okay. Uh, and a lot of people are gonna say, well, Matt's obviously got this thing to shoot it. No, no, Matt's got this thing to keep it. Let me tell you why. You may have noticed these bags in the back. They're all full of body armor. And that is because this car was owned before today by the man who owns Premier Body Armor. Premier Body Armor is owned by a guy named Frank. Frank saw my video saying that I have this giant piece of silver that I want to trade, and he thought, I've got an idea. So Frank actually used to, before he started Premier Body Armor, he used to have a company where they would build these armored vehicles, and he eventually sold that company, but he kept three armored trucks. Uh, and this is one of them. So he had these trucks and they were just sitting. He, he told me, he was like, man, I just got three armored trucks just sitting. He doesn't do that for his business anymore. He makes personal body armor now. And he was like, so it was just sitting, just taking up space. And he was like, I'd rather have a silver bar and I think you'd enjoy this thing. And so Frank traded me, well, he hasn't come to get his silver bar yet. He's coming down here in a couple weeks. He traded me this car for the silver bar with one stipulation. His only stipulation is that I don't shoot or destroy this car. And I was like, well, I would net, why would I do that? He was like, man, we put a lot of work into this car. Like everything is armored on this car. And he's like, it would just, it would hurt me if you destroyed it. I was like, deal, freaking deal. That's the best thing anyone has offered and it is so cool. So I now have a car that can stop a black tip 30 odd six or maybe even a 50 BMG. <laughs> it's so cool. I was gonna show you guys while the doors close, you can see how the glass goes past this right here, and then that steel comes up here so that if anything does come through the pillar part of the door that's not armored, it hits solid steel on the other side. Nothing can come through and hit you when you're sitting in any of these seats. You're good. So besides the doors and the floor and the ceiling, everything, let's just try to close that door and forgot that it's very heavy. Everything on this car looks pretty stock. If this thing was driving on the street, you would never go, oh my gosh, look at that thing. It just looks like a regular Suburban that someone put some wheels on. But it is not stock, not even a little bit. They have beefed this thing up. As you can imagine, this thing probably weighs a ton because it's got freaking plate steel and giant glass in a huge box right there. So to counter that, they had to put some giant springs on here. So look at those leaf springs. Look how many there are. It is beefed up. These things usually weigh 6,000 pounds. A stock Chevy Suburban weighs about 6,000 pounds. Mine weighs 12,000 pounds. Mm, double the amount, which is why they had to beef that up, which is also why they have this giant sway bar back here. Huge sway bar and then a huge rear end. You see those those trusses, those gussets up there? Giant supporting structures all over that big beefy rear end. So they've totally upgraded all the suspension under this thing to handle this much weight. They've also done some things to the engine. Because as you can imagine, there's a lot more weight to pull around. So this engine is a gasoline engine. It's got the old Vortec engine. They have upgraded this radiator. So it has a huge aluminum radiator up in there. They've also put a cooler down there. I haven't figured out if that is an oil cooler or a transmission cooler. Not sure, but they want to make sure when this engine is dragging this super heavy car around that it is cool. 
that is a giant piece of steel to keep any bullets from flying in through the hood. Is there, yep, same thing here on the sides. Giant pieces of steel here on both sides to keep bullets from flying in and hitting our engine. There's also, you can kind of see it right there, a big piece of steel that's perforated and then there's another one behind it that's perforated in different areas so that air can pass through but no bullets can come through. So the engine is completely armored so that no one can shoot that, shoot your radiator, nothing like that. There's a K&N air filter here. They've tuned this thing to get more power out of it. Done a few other small mods to get some more horsepower out of this thing so that it can move this giant heavy truck around. Because they also added this strut to help pick up the hood since it's probably way heavier with all that weight on it. Big, beefy, strong wheels. And then if you look in here, you can kind of see little holes there. So they've got drilled and slotted rotors and big brakes under this thing because also it's hard to stop 12,000 pounds. We got long tube headers up in there. I got headers on a freaking Suburban, man. <laughs> big brake rotors on the back as well and big calipers. That is the inside. Definitely helps to stop the scar. Still hard to stop but way better with those. And this is a front wheel, of course, it is four wheel drive, so you can get out of anything. And got nice run flat tires on all four corners, so ain't nobody stopping you. I already know what you're thinking. You're like, Matt, that is a sweet car, but you're not allowed to shoot it. What the heck are you gonna do with it? What are you talking, why would I wanna shoot this? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So my plan is, and I need your help with this. I want to turn this B7 beast of an armored Suburban into the best dang bug out vehicle the world has ever seen. So what I like about this thing is it's totally incognito. Driving down the street, you would not know that there's anything special with this Suburban at all. But there's a lot of special with this thing. They've put a ton of time and money into this vehicle to make it bulletproof. So what I want to do is make this thing a bug out vehicle that looks still exactly the same from the outside. What I'm talking about is adding stuff to the inside, everything you would need to bug out. But I need your help on figuring out what exactly I would need. Like, you want, obviously, pew pews, big and small, ammo for those pew pews, and then you want some survival stuff, uh, which I need help figuring out exactly what is important and what's not. I'm not a prepper. Like, I guess I, I am by default a prepper because I do know a lot about surviving and I know a lot of medical stuff and I know a lot of pew pew stuff and so I guess by default I am a prepper but I'm not someone who spends a lot of time thinking about that kind of stuff because I think I'd be fine. But let's say you are one of those people. What would you recommend is in the duffel bag in the back of this thing? We need medical supplies. We need a little bit of food and water. So like some MREs and some water would probably be good. Oh, this is cool. So once those lights turn off automatically, I also have red lights in here, right? So at nighttime it, it shows up better, but it's so you can drive without people, you know, noticing like there's people in the car or I guess not if you're driving, if you're parked. If you need lights so bad guys can't see you, they got, we got red lights in here. It's pretty sweet. Oh, I didn't tell you. It does have nice amenities like air conditioning, power seats, radio, like we're living in style in this armored vehicle. So I need food, water, pew pews, ammo, medical kit, you know, a little, little first aid kit so I can bandage, you know, I don't know. Like, I wanna be able to get somewhere if there is a bad situation, get there as safely as possible. Or if I'm like, man, my house is not safe anymore, I gotta get my family out of here into a safe location, I get in this thing, which is fueled up, loaded up with all of our stuff that we need, and we hit the road. We got, we get Premier to send us like body armor that fits the kids too, it'd be great. And then we'll just take a little family road trip in an end of world scenario to get us to safety. So, Demolisha, I need your help, you preppers especially. What would you put in the bag in this car? What are must-haves? What are good options? I want to know exactly how I should outfit this. And then we will make a little video series outfitting <laughs> my armored car. It still seems weird. I have an armored car, and I want to make it even better. I need your help. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Thank you to Frank from Premier Armor. You're gonna see uh, Frank in the future. He's flying down here to get his silver bar. I mean, maybe he just won't come and I'll get to keep that too. That'd be a great deal for me. But he's coming down here to get the silver bar and then I'll get him to go over and explain this stuff because I don't know all the stuff they put into this car and he knows everything they put into this car. So it'd be nice to kind of have his take on everything. So. We will have that very soon. Appreciate you guys watching this video. Thanks for watching Off The Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Hold up, we actually just found something awesome. I was getting all the footage on my computer, and I found, while I was bored and waiting for it to upload, I found a video of my Suburban that was uploaded to YouTube 10 years ago. Uh, it's right there on this. I mean, that's what the video is called, in case you want to check it out. He said he sold this company. I don't know if this company still exists or if this was the name of this company that now is, has been renamed, I don't really know, but this is the video, we're gonna watch it together. So that says 2010 B7 Plus, which means it is more powerful than B7. Dude, check out the thing. I mean, that's the upgraded suspension. They can go around those cones like crazy. That was just them accelerating and stopping. Single piece sidle technology, complete armor capsule, which is why it's all closed up. Completely reinforced rear end, yes. Big brake kit, yep, check. Mil-spec certified blast wheels. I don't really know what that means. Custom interior with lighting systems that complement a tactile response vehicle. Nice. Power hydraulic door assist. Check. Complete armor capsule. 30 out 6 armor piercing. 762 by 51 AP and 50 cal protection. Multi-hit rating. So that tells us this is actually 7 plus. B7 plus is the rating, which means it can take 50 BMG, which is why I think there's differing opinions on if a B7 can take a 50 BMG. So when they're saying B7 plus, it means we are 50 BMG good to go. Thanks for watching, I love you, and I'll see you next time. Camera's at number... Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare.